Yeah, I want to pick up on something and get your opinion on it actually, Paul, because there was something in one of the Sky Sports articles here. So the fees understood to be worth 111 million with Casado set to travel to Liverpool on Friday for a medical. There will also be a sell on clause in, included in the deal. Does that tell you that Liverpool have changed? I mean, this is very un Liverpool, isn't it? A sell on clause. Yeah, well, this is, this is, I, again, we could be sat here in two or three years saying this was a, this was a stupid decision from Liverpool. Let's just get it clear on this. I'm not, and, you know, and a lot of the big transfers that we made have. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is this. Uh, if we're really going to dive into it, and I want to go with the optimism on, on it all, but I do think that's I do think it's far too much money for a lad who you know. I, I was looking at this yesterday. Forty-five games in the Prem. He's played two thousand more minutes than Lavia. It's not. You know what I mean? That's a, that's a. It's a almost season. a fifteen game from Bajetic to Lavia, and fifteen games from Lavia to totally. to, to Casado. He's got the best part of. So I think it's like twenty five caps for Colombia, which I'll add to that, of course, by Ecuador. Ecuador Sorry, but yeah. the um, but that's um, but you know kind of kind of by the by, the sell on clause thing. This is all very un Liverpool, and it, I'm not a hundred percent convinced that it's the it's it's necessarily smart. You know, we sat to can't sit here and say Chelsea's throwing out those stupid long contracts, you know, and criticize them for being a bit like short term is it for for a long term for seemingly a long term project. It's very short sighted thinking. Um, so I am a little worried about them doing things like that. But again, it goes back to it. If this is what it takes to get that deal over the line, life's a shit house. You didn't plan for no Fabinho and no Henderson. You got money for them though, and you need to go and get the best, the best in class option to do it. And if this is how you get that done, you don't get a free run at these footballers. Chelsea have got loads of money. You know it. If we've gone and done that to blow them out the water, well, then this fine. is the footy manager aspect of it, isn't it? Because you you might think that Chelsea are going to go in with a hundred million. You might think they're going to go in with more because you're going in with more, and you might just sprinkle something else on top. I've done it on footy manager games all my life. You go in with the same fee, but you give them 20% sell on and you know you never sell them and you know you don't care. That's that's the future Chris's problem. Yeah. I don't give a shit. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? And, and I don't think that Liverpool Football Club are that stupid that they'll have done this, but he's 21 years old. In five years' time, the market could be well mad. It could be 300 million for him in five years' time. Yeah. Like, and he and re- could be the best defensive midfielder in the world. And yeah, we're giving them a 10% sell on fee, but we've got 270 million. And it, it's just, I think it's a, a it's a recognition that Liverpool needed to do something different. And that's a good thing. And I don't think we'll see another sell on clause in the next one. Mm-hmm. But I do think that they've gone, this is an opportunity for us today that we have to take advantage of. And they've decided to well, take advantage. This is it. Look at the Andre stuff. You know, the, 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 they needed him to get knocked out of the Copper Libertadores to be able to push the button on that this summer. That's now not happened. There's still a chance. There's still an outside chance they might get that done for January. But and then they've looked at Lavia, and it's basically now Lavia or Caicedo, and there must be someone who's still in the club. You know, like they, they were like, I remember back in my day when we chose not to go heavy on Alexis Sanchez, and we were left with Mario Balotelli, and someone's going, Oh my God! Well, we don't want that situation to. And ultimately, someone went, uh, You know, we didn't get too many, and we ended up with Artemelo. So this is Lavia's better, and he's got a higher ceiling, but it's not. Too dissimilar to that kind better. of than than like oh, the, the, oh, okay, 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 okay. the, yeah, the yeah. you know the, that's not he's not he's he's obviously got a ceiling he can be improved he's going to be a good footballer by all accounts but you're still leaving yourself with a player who's not good enough no. probably now yeah to, to you know he's a developmental prospect so it's um it's great in it though it's well, just it's, great when shit like this happens it just it just it's so even yesterday you you said at the start of this show there that you were pessimistic I was exactly the same. Yesterday night, I'm sort of going to bed and I didn't see it until I woke up this morning. And I was like, I was so shocked and so happy and so elated. And there's going to be so many people watching this now who are just in exactly the same boat because this is what football can do. I hate the transfer window, but the, you can't replicate days like today during the season very often. No, These no. days are like 7 0 wins against Manchester United type of days. It's not as important, of course, but it makes you feel something. And that's what being a football fan is. Yeah, look, I said, it's about, it's about going into the season for me with optimism. And it's mad because. I, I think- him signed by 12 he can play by the way well yeah it's the um it's that but that that general see, feeling of optimism towards the season i've i think it's been undercut because of how horrible it's been on social media you know people have been asking me all week how do people do blah 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 and i said if i'd not been on twitter all summer and just watch pre-season i'd be so excited i'd still be thinking we needed a dm absolutely but i'd be thinking look at all the goals we've got look how exciting our brand of football is i think we're going to cause a load of problems for a lot for a lot of teams um so if this is the thing now that means that we can go because all of a sudden 
that's the, the glaring hole in the squad. There's still work to be done. I would suggest to have a fully rounded quality across the board in the squad. But I, funnily enough, Baz from Toffee TV is just what then I was literally just about to mention him. He's he's optimistic about Everton's season, yeah. not because he thinks they're gonna they're gonna have a, a boss season. He just thinks they're not gonna get relegated. And it, look, Evertonians, I don't think he will be. I'm Evertonians are always optimistic in the summer. Yeah. If Evertonians can be optimistic about the summer when they are rubbish and they have consistently bad season, they've nearly got relegated two seasons back to back. Why aren't we? Because we do our own heads in with the with the weight of expectation. Yeah, but looks at like Liverpool are, are moving heaven and earth to meet the, the demands of what we want them to be, which is a a, a title challenge and European challenge. I'll team. say it right now as well. We're gonna go, we're gonna have a, a start midfield of Casado, Alexis McAllister, and Sobersly, and I didn't think that was possible. I didn't think that we'd change all three midfielders. And listen, we are losing a wealth of experience, and it's not necessarily in the first three to four months of this season going to be the best thing for us. But the long term looks bright and rosy right now, doesn't it? And the fact that we've spunked two hundred million pound on midfield is finally, it's just like wow, mm -hmm. wow. Yeah. Well, it's good. We finally, we finally pulled off. That we've done what, what what's required as I say there's a little bit of the element of this and we'll see what comes next there's still three weeks left of the transfer window you know Tiago gone maybe I, I mean I don't think he, <laughs> Surely he, we can't he just, doesn't want, he just doesn't want to go does he so well, you know for I, free and get a sign on for next year yeah, exactly. okay, he might have, maybe should have done yeah, that he goes to Barca next summer only but the um, I still think we need that centre half but it might just be that thing as well of all the top targets that we really really want who are noticeably better than Jarrell Quanser and Andy Robertson are not available for a fee that we could come close to touching and the midfield so urgently needed it because of the Fabinho Henderson stuff. So we've had to move and, and, and that's what it'll be. And, you know, the, my fear was a, a two day, like a day ago was the whole painting the Golden Gate Bridge thing. We've rebooted the attack <clears throat> and finally we're starting to see that because they're all available. Like there, yeah. And then you start to do the midfield. So we, we, we've rebooted the attack. So that front five, the attacking end of the pitch looks fabulous for what we're doing. But actually by the time we sorted that, the back end needs, needs work. And I was even worried that yeah, it, <clears throat> the knock-on impact, impact of further down the pitch, you might undercut what you're doing. But if we've got the best possible attack and the best possible midfield, then we might have to make our peace with what kind of comes. But if you've still got, we've still got good defenders. And if the the case has been that defence is being let down by the energy of the team in front of it, well, we've got not, we haven't got that excuse anymore. Um, so yeah, I feel I feel optimistic about what Liverpool's chances are, and I feel like with Casado, we're far closer to being a team that can challenge Man City. Yes. Than we were <clears throat> a day ago. I, I genuinely thought it's getting top four. I thought we'd be comfortably top four and have a go at the Europa League and the Cups, but I didn't think we were title challengers. I do know.